Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, President Trump. Trump gives people nicknames. May people be affirmatively Trump positive or decidedly Trump negative. They use those nicknames. Love him or hate him, they use his framing. They promote his product. So, part of, there's, I'm not a persuasion expert, certainly seek subject matter experts on persuasion, but part of Trump's appeal is that he understands branding. He understands branding. In fact, he may understand it better than almost anybody else in the world. Um, it's kind of his bread and butter, the thing he's known for and has been known for, for 40 or 50 years. Even his name, Trump, it's not their original name. Ask John Oliver. Ask John Oliver. Drumpf. It was originally Drumpf, but they rebranded to Trump because, well, Trump, Trump's Trump, right? It's, uh, it, it has this, uh, this implication. He's the one to Trump. He's the one to come out on top. Sort of sets him up for success in a way. A very subtle way. But he gives people nicknames. And may people be affirmatively Trump positive or decidedly Trump negative. So if people are anti-Trumpers or pro-Trumpers, it doesn't matter. They tend to use those nicknames. They tend to use... The things he says, they tr they tend to. Uh, you can have find the linguistic blueprints, the 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 um, linguistic, I should say, fingerprint, the linguistic fingerprint of Trump and other people on everything people say. So if you hear me use a term and I go, well, you know, two movies on one screen, you go, oh, you listen to Scott Adams, you you you've heard you've heard Scott Adams, or if someone says something like uh, the lamestream media. I'm not sure if it was Trump or Stix Hexenhammer 666 that said that first, but there's certainly these uh, linguistic fingerprints you can find. And guess what? I got linguistic fingerprints from Scott Adams. So you can find that. But people did tend to use it. They, they spread the messaging. It doesn't matter if they love or hate him, if they think that he's incompetent, or if they think that he's a god, if they worship him as a as a bit of a false idol, the modern religion of celebrity, the intersection between that and the modern religion of institutions and state. Well, he's a, he's a bit of a, a state god because he's the president of the United States. People definitely um, go both ways. Or he's a complete idiot. The person that became the president is a total moron. He doesn't know how to read. He doesn't know how to speak. He doesn't know how to think. And he's very egotistical, and all he cares about is himself, and he's not humble at all. I think he once said, actually, Trump said, in 2016, he said, I'm more humble than most people can understand. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. President, but uh doesn't pass the fact-checking. <laughs> So people use those nicknames, they spread his messaging, they spread his frame. It doesn't matter if they love him or hate him. And uh, it's kind of fun to watch. They're promoting the product, too. They're, they're mentioning him. Uh, some people will talk to me about, like, hey, why do you call attention to this thing here when you don't want people to like this? Or you do, well, well why aren't you, why are you putting forward this? And I say, look, we share everything. We share everything. We don't need to do things based on persuasion. We don't have to do things based on what we want. Sometimes it's just funny to share something and to, and to take in and to listen and to present different things from, from all sides of every political angle. You know, I call it the political sphere. Uh, you know, you don't have to necessarily, like I say, re retweets aren't endorsements, shares aren't endorsements. Sometimes it's just fun to see something and to see what people's reaction might be. But people, people do promote things that they may not, not necessarily like. I remember actually, uh, speaking of uh, a co-worker at the office, 
I actually remember when somebody was saying to me, you know, I don't like Kim Kardashian. I'm so sick and tired of hearing about the Kardashians and Kanye West and all this stuff. I'm sick of hearing about it. And I'm like, then why did you bring it up? <laughs> right? You're continuing this talk. Now, I know, of course, people have uh, every right to have an opinion about what's, what's over the top, what's going too far. They have a right to complain. I love to complain. I'm like George Carlin, complaints and, grie complaints and grievances. I love it. I love it. So I do support that, of course. But it, when somebody is complaining that you're talking about somebody too much and they're talking about that person, they brought them up in order to complain about them. Ah, uh, ah, uh, it's a paradox. Or it's just a, just a silly thing. So the more we use those nicknames that he provides, the more that we share his image and his face, doesn't matter if we love Trump or hate Trump, the more we share him around, the more we look at him, the more we listen to him talk, may it be whatever subject. That's the thing about this uh, Cunningham's Law effect, that you know if somebody is wrong or if you think that somebody made a mistake, Right? If, if, if one mistake from a 45 minute speech by anybody is put on to trending on Twitter and people just love this one part, imagine how many people that weren't going to watch that 45 minute speech that now will because that one part, because they want to find something else. They want to find something else for, uh, to make fun of, to, to get dopamine, to get serotonin. Hopefully not cortisol. Uh, and of course, oxytocin from sharing it and enjoying the smiles and the replies of the, repli of the reply guys and the reply gals of other people.